You guys good? All right, and welcome back to Hoss Brutality. Um, now, is the time, <laughs> now is the time where we, uh, we're going to do our up. top five. Uh, about top five wineries for bubbles in Oregon. But this is going to be focused on wineries that um, you can go to taste. They always have at least one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, most of the time, more than one. Try to. So that's kind yeah. of like our... There are a lot of wineries that do one. Us. There's a lot of wineries that the do one. The token one. You're, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, so, number one, of course... Argyle. You should taste Argyle's... Gym, or their, uh, Argyle? Like, you could learn a few Ooh, things, Chris. Look at that. Whoa. Nice. Just a little. Oh, just oh, a yeah. little. Here we what? go. No, Argyle is on the list, though. Um, right. Argyle is like a legitimate good place to get sparkling, and you can get... How many? Five. You can do a bubble full flight. flight. Like five. Like I think five it's the only six. place you can do an entire flight. Yeah, of just we bubbles. did a flight. Except, for except roots. for roots. Yeah, yeah. For roots. Just call in advance. I'm then I'm not gonna just do it. Whip it out every day. Yeah. You know? So yeah, you go to Argyle. Yeah, well, and people know the name. They can get Argyle. It's kind of known as the sparkling place. I mean, a lot of people request it when they're out yeah. and they want to either end or start with bubbles. And the and they have some good ones. They have they have yeah. some ones that I like, and you know you can go and. But the most important thing is you can go in there anytime. And you can get a full bubble flight. So bubbles Bubble. fans, Argyle. It's hard to Thanks, sir. hard to keep them off the list. Exactly. What else we got, Cole? Um, we have it's a good temperature. Soko Blosser is on the list. Uh, I tasted this one in a tasting with Winderly, um, but honestly, I would be lying if I said I remembered all the characteristics of it. I know it's a good, it's a really good um, spark. They do some really nice stuff. Yeah. But they've got a few options. Mm -hmm. Again, it's one of the nice things. Okay. I, have, I only tasted one of them, and it was at one point. I mean, this is a couple yeah. of years ago, but. Yeah, so I, a lot of times they'll, you'll That's walk right fantastic. in, and they'll greet you with bubbles. Cheers. Whether it's the Evolution Spark thing <laughs> or. Yeah. The uh, the bluebird, I think it's called the bluebird. Bluebird's yes. the one that like I had. That. Yeah. that one's nice. Good, That's and those delicious. are both affordable. Like the yeah. evolution, I think is like around twenty bucks, twenty to twenty two bucks or something yep. like that. And the bluebird, I think, is under thirty. Um, and then I know they have a a, a brute rosé as yep. well, mm -hmm. and they might even have one more. I'm not sure, but. That's pretty good. Yeah, I remember they like it was like. Two thousand eleven. You know when we had the really cool vintage. Yeah. It was um, they were they they, I was getting calls from them. I was at Laurel Ridge at the time, and they were really gung ho on wanting to go full on bubbles and stuff. Nice. And and do a lot. I never really worked with them, but you know, Alex and Allison have always been wanting to take it up a notch from where his mom, their mom and dad started yeah you know and um i know that they've they've worked really hard at, at doing that and and i've had the bluebird before and it's really for the price point it yeah. i you know I, i'm not gonna diss argyle but i think it's better than argyle's mm -hmm. entry level and mm -hmm. their price i'd point. agree mm -hmm. yeah at that at that price point that argyle does it at. I'm not saying that argyle doesn't make good stuff i mean like nate makes some really nice bubbles and the extended tirage stuff and the older stuff and they're always their Blanc de Blanc is always like yep. really rock solid. Like great examples of what Oregon can do yeah. with with Method Champenois. Yeah. I've always thought yeah, right, the same thing. Good good deal. When I go to Soccer Blosser off oftentimes I'll <laughs> walk out of there with what? A sixer of the evolution or the bluebird, just because I like having bubbles. I like having bubbles around. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that I think about it. I've had the evolution yeah. with you. That's For the yellow, sure. can, yellow can. Yeah. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. The bluebird, I remember because there's like kind of a um, there's a blue like a on like it. a lemony yeah like a lemony taste to it. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, mm. They probably mm -hmm. put some lemon in it. Yeah. Lemons. A little squeeze with lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Squeezy squeeze. Probably sure. more blanc to blanc, more white grape. Yeah. Mm. Um. All right. Yeah. Next one on the list, Trusatum. Uh, Trusatum. Yeah, yeah. You, you've had that. I've right? had them. Yeah, they're it, they're good. I think the last time we were there, we tasted two or three of them on the flight. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. They're, yeah, and I think to get them all, you probably have to call ahead, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yep. They have had, like, all white flights in the mm -hmm. past and stuff, so I'm not sure if they lean bubbles that way. But just knowing that if you have, you know, like, some people in your group that want want bubbles you can go and you know and, yeah. and know you can taste it because what we run into a lot is people like oh yeah i like bubbles and then you you know you you end up there's a lot of places that have one you know yeah. and if you if they say they like bubbles and then you take into a, a, a winery that has one they're <laughs> like yeah. 
Hey, well, and often cool. the one that has one doesn't want to open a bottle of bubbles because they're yeah. like, we it's made a, a few cases of that or yeah. we made a few barrels of that. Because if they only make one thing of bubbles, you know, bubbles takes a lot of work as we've kind of gone over. I guess we, maybe you could explain how much work bubbles take so people, wondering why people don't make a lot of it. Well, I guess it also depends on what sort of classification of bubbles are you mm -hmm. looking sure. at? Met you know, are you well, if somebody wants to make a true yeah, champagne style. Yeah, method champagne yeah. in that case, yeah. yeah, that's a lot more labor intensive, time consuming cost prohibitive sort of wine to make where you are exerting a lot more effort than your returns usually are mm -hmm. so from a cost standpoint it's it's a lot more to undertake hmm. so when you're going go, when you're going to go look that route um you got to look at basically how much are you going to want to make what size of distribution are you do you have right. for that what is your price point? Right. I mean, I mean, I know these are all sort of geeky things for like the insider people to determine, but it ultimately will be the deciding factor upon wineries being making one right. or making a shit ton. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, to get totally technical on right. it. You know, that's what we're well, and why? It's and technical. it's 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 good to understand why when you go to a place. Like we're talking about this with a group like that. Mm -hmm. Why people will get frustrated and say, you know, you can't open your bubbles. It's like, well, we don't make that many bubbles. And it costs so much labor-wise for us to make each bottle. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That it just open it and maybe let you try it and maybe buy it. It's not maybe. like that. Yeah. You know? So like yeah. Stefan's saying, when you go, if you want to go to somewhere, the ones we're talking about are going to offer you a selection of bubbles. They're going to not feel maybe as... Ideally, yeah. Taken aback with by right. even asking to taste it. Right. Because yeah. they're kind of known for bubbles uh, themselves. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Back to the list. Our fourth spot, of course, is, is Roots. Is um, I, I love people, bringing people here for bubbles. Usually I'll re request ahead. Summertime, Thank but you. oftentimes you'll just have a bubble swipe that you yeah, can. Yeah, well, if you have enough kind of like volume, people well, coming through. It's definitely great to have a call ahead sort of situation. Because we've run into a little bit of a, you know, we, we've, we, the popularity of bubbles have gone up substantially mm. in, in the Willamette Valley over the past few years, which is yeah. beautiful to see. And we have not been able to keep up with that production. So mm. our production is sort of limited, but we do have bubbles. But if we know in advance that this is what you're looking at wanting to do, We'll definitely cater towards you. We, I mean, we're not stupid. Come on. It's not like we're going to be like, no, 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 no. We're only going to cater to these clientele Okay, people. but some people that literally do that. So. Well, I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> but they I, are I, stupid. And I, so, well, yeah. no, I don't know if they're stupid. It's just they're, they're, that's their business model, and that's what their the way business they, they, they want no, to do. Their business model is annoying. So. Yeah. Okay, so now what are all the bubbles that you make? Um, Rosé. I do a Sauvignon oh, yeah. Blanc bubbles. But those both are more like when we were talking about initially about like different types of bubbles. There's the Method Champenois mm. style, which is Labor intensive traditional. And, yeah. Yeah, right. traditional. And then yeah. the other ones that I just was just rattled off, the Rosé and the Sauvignon Blanc, those are both what we would call force carbonated mm -hmm. sort of ones. Those are for like the everyday sort of purposes. It's It's, you know like adult soda pop going back to yeah, that it's less expensive yeah it's, it's easier to do it, it creates a wine that you get the bubbles that you want but it doesn't have the complexity potentially of say the method champenois where it's been aged it's been um it's been uh aged for like three years or so and then disgorged and then left on the lees and all the extra tidbit to it yeah yeah so okay. so you got the two yeah there's those two and then we yep. usually have like you know a couple meth and champenoise or three of them we have at least of between the block the block the block noir and the brute the brute would be a mix between block to block being white grapes traditionally uh and usually it's chardonnay predominantly uh, what else is in there block noir chardonnay? Which, which in a blanc de blanc besides chardonnay yeah, it, be it can there. be it can be pinot blanc or it can be pinot gris or okay. it could be i've uh seen even actually a blanc de blanc 
but you know it's usually just chardonnay but i've i've actually i have seen somebody call a blanc de blanc with just a little bit of riesling in it mm. which is you know I, i'm fine with it personally i'm not down with like it's got to be like 100 percent this or that sort of rigidity to the whole but you spit it in their fucking labeling. face I'm like you what the f- you are betraying Assholes. all tradition but like in burgundy or yeah. in, uh, i'm sorry in, in champagne they would never put riesling or, well they can't you know, yeah mm-hmm. they don't so grow there riesling there mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but they do i think there Smaller are a few than... vineyards that there is a little bit of pinot blanc mixed in there and then there's another white grape too i can't remember what it is i don't it's not oxala it's something else but anyways that's something i've got to go look through my books to go research and grow or something anyway um, yeah and then and then you've done uh malone yeah do you still do that one? Malone too. Oh, yeah i love that one yeah we'll resurrect that again when i find a better source for fruit <laughs> and i've got i've got fruit coming up here i'm okay. Okay. take about it won't be this year's harvest maybe next year's we'll we'll get okay. some fruit from that hmm. i uh yeah. i'm a huge fan of the sparkling sauvignon blanc Thank the you. little cans, these these little guys. That's just like a summertime. Keep mm. I always try and keep some in the fridge. Mm. It's a winner, but I like. Yeah, I've enjoyed all of your bubbles. So so bravo. Thanks, um, bro. So those are four places. Mm. We don't have a top a real top five. Those are four places that you can go and you can all, almost always get two or more sparkling, yeah. especially if you call ahead. Now in place of a fifth one, um, we're gonna all pick kind of a favorite single bottling so these are wineries that mm-hmm. make maybe one sparkling and but it's just it's dynamite and it's really really worth discussing mm-hmm. and uh you'll sometimes get it in the flight but oftentimes not uh, but know that if you go see it on a shelf or whatever that it's gonna be good um my one that i want to add on there that i, that I want to have as an honorable mention or whatever you want to call it is the native flora sparkling oh i think uh cuvee lucier lucier something like that um, I love it. I think it's really good. Scott does a nice job. It's not too. I don't like the really yeasty uh, kinds of sparklings, and uh, I think he uses actually a little Pinot Blanc in there, and, uh, and it's a tasty one. So that's mine. What do you guys? Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? 